Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today's show is going to feature the channeling and the sound healing of Daniel Scranton. He channels many energies amongst them. The 9D Arcturian Council, Pleiadians, Archangels, Yeshua, the Hathors, and he also does light languages. He offers so, so much. So stick around because we'll be talking to Daniel and he will be channeling. Dare to Dream won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. It is listed in Apple Podcasts, high ranking under self-improvement. It is in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. I'm laughing because I'm already thinking of questions for Daniel. I'm actually already deeply connected. So yes, I am uh, laughing at myself and my lovely mind. I'm Debbie Dashinger. Welcome, welcome to all of you warmly. Thank you so much, by the way. Every time you write a comment, I read it. I love that you receive the show the way you do, and I am speaking to you, and I love that you are on this journey too. It takes a tribe, it takes a village, and we are in this together. I am a media visibility expert. I am a book writing coach, and I take your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status. I do all the heavy lifting for the author. Additionally, I also am a book writing coach, so I coach you. I have a group that meets twice a month on Zoom, live with me, intimate, all spiritual messengers, doing an amazing job writing their books. And finally, I run a boutique publicity where I get my clients booked on radio and podcasts. Now, if you'd like to learn how, I've taught the classes before, I've got an online program that is comprehensive and stupendous. But let me show you how free to start with, go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift and get the templates and get the videos and learn how you can start writing and also being interviewed and be a guest. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. <clears throat> this show is sponsored by Dr. Nane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. If you'd like to learn more, go to drdanehear.com. My guest, Daniel Scranton, is a verbal channel, spiritual teacher, and sound healer. He's been channeling the 12th dimensional non-physical collective known as the Creators since 2010 fall. And since then, a wide array of other guides and collectives have spoken through him. Some of those include Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, and the Arcturian Council. He also discovered an ability to channel light languages and healing overtones. And he's used this ability to help others heal themselves and manifest the reality they desire. Daniel works with individuals in one-on-one -on -one sessions, does group events, and teaches a variety of classes, including channeling classes. You can follow his daily channeled messages at danielscranton.com, also on his YouTube channel, where you can watch him channel each new transmission. And with that, I welcome Daniel to the Dare to Dream show. It is so great to have you. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for that introduction. Yes. Oh, my word. Like, oof, I really started thinking about but I'm here. I'm back here with you. So I was like, I want to ask him this and I want to ask him that. So huh. much to ask you. Um, but where my mind went, while I was just reading those few lines about you, is like, what are we doing here? Like, how are we all attracting this right now? How did I attract you? How did I attract this conversation? How do the people who are watching us live or in replays find us? right now in this particular moment, which is forever, right? There's really no time. What What's going on here energetically? And were we called to this conversation? Did our higher soul know this is where you need to be engaged? This is your path. 
Oh, absolutely. I think that all of it is orchestrated and we get to play a part in that orchestration, obviously, with our free will. You know, I have the option using my free will to say to no to something <laughs> that ultimately would serve me if I did it because I could choose fear. I could be like, oh, you know, I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to be because I used to choose that all the time. Mm -hmm. I used to choose to, to um, not be so exposed. Mm -hmm. And and then I decided about four and a half years ago, I have to. I, I If I ever really want to reach the people that I want to reach, I have to start showing up more. And But it's funny that you say that about the orchestration of these things, because I do know that like some things are pre-planned by us before the lifetime. And then once we get here and we're using our free will and we're noticing like, oh, if I, if I choose this, I feel this way. If I choose that, I feel this way. And we start to navigate more on our own. But then when we're asleep at night, I think a lot of these plans are made between our higher selves, your higher self, my higher self, or however you want to look at it, us in our astral bodies, our guides, our, all the helpers, teachers that we have that we can access while we're asleep. Because when we're asleep, we're not just wasting time. And, you know, our consciousness is very active. We get so much accomplished at night while we're asleep. And it's much more than just uh, random dreams that we're having. There's a ton that's going on that's helping us on our journey. Yeah. What are you of the mind of for dream? I think it's interesting. You bring that up. You know, I got a dream catcher for our room. Yeah. I got to say no joke. Like both our dreams have been on crack. I mean, it's just <laughs> deep, but, and I wish sometimes I could program like even if it was just, I want to have fun and laugh in my dream, or I want to, I don't know, I want to have, you know, a lo love, an intimate love, or, you know, great friendships, I don't know, travel, something I want to learn spiritually. I mean, is it possible to do that? Or are we working things out, acting things out? How does that work? I think it's really important to start being more intentional in every aspect of our lives. And while we're asleep is one of those aspects of our lives. So as we are drifting off to sleep, mm -hmm. we can set intentions and say, you know, this is what I really want to experience tonight. This is what I want to download because a dream essentially is a download. And it's a download that you receive right at that moment that you're waking up. And then it feels like you are in the dream somehow magically that the dream took place over hours while you were sleeping yeah. but it's really a download that sort of messes with our whole concept of time so that we can receive it all in that moment and get maybe some information about what we were actually doing while we were asleep what we were learning about or um exploring what realm we were exploring with a guide or with another person, maybe that hasn't been in our lives in 20 years. Mm. I think my favorite dream so far this year was one I was definitely visited by extraterrestrials. They were so benevolent, so advanced, so loving. And there was a group of them almost like in, there's nothing we wear here today that even looks like that, but I would say, <sighs> like a robe of some sort. It's It couldn't even mm. be a monk's robe, but it had a hood and it had a robe. And I just knew they were surrounding me. And I felt like, oh my God, I was so happy and so connected. And they had the most beautiful intentions. And then the next night I... I tried to, you know, program that, like, could you come back? Could we do this more? And I haven't seen them since that I'm aware of, but I would welcome that dream, you know, further, more yes. visitation, please. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whenever we have one of those spiritually transformative experiences, it's like, well, I want to have it all the time now. <laughs> yeah, more, please. I'll have more of that, please. <laughs> you have a quote, Daniel, that... um 
it's really interesting. And I just want to say a piece of it back to you and have you talk about what the deeper meaning of it is, explain it. And your quote is, you don't have to take anything that you are experiencing seriously, knowing that you're playing a game and that it is a simulation will help you relax a little. Talk about that. Well, first of all, we should um, point out that I didn't come up with it. It was channeled from, um, I believe that one's from the newest group I started working with, which is the Collective of Ascended Masters. So for a long time, I was channeling Yeshua by himself, St. Germain, Kuan Yin, the two Marys, um, I'm probably Buddha, you know, those, those were the ascended masters I was working with individually. And then during one of my channeling classes, um, I, when I take people into the channeling state, now I, when I'll, I'll mute myself so they don't have to hear me channeling while they're also channeling, but um, I will now tap in and see who I can connect to. And thymus is what they call themselves. And I was like, really thymus? And they're like, yeah, we're the collective of ascended masters. And the thymus gland is where the high heart chakra is. So it makes sense in, in a couple of ways to choose that name. The other one is that the thymus gland is training our white blood cells to do what they're supposed to do. So it, the ascended masters are like training us on how to be who we really are. But I'll get to the quote now. Um, <laughs> so there's been a lot of talk in the new age, of course, about ever since the movies, the Matrix, the Matrix movies came out, especially people are like, well, is it a simulation? Actually, it's been talked about a long time before the Matrix movies, the idea that this is a simulation, that this is an illusion that we're all playing in. And when you realize that, when you realize that this is really the dream, that this is not the the real reality that we think it is, then you can start to play around with it more and have more fun with it. You know, it doesn't have to be so serious, like something is really at stake here. That's, you know, life or death, or as we, we were taught, most of us as kids were taught heaven or hell, eternal heaven or hell is what's at stake here. And that's a, those are pretty big stakes. So that makes life a lot more serious. That's why I think we think of religion and spirituality as these very serious pursuits because so much would be at stake if that were true, if there were some final judgment day that was going to determine where your soul rested for all eternity. <laughs> yeah, that's intense. That's yeah. really intense. And so it's kind of like the concept of time and it's like the concept of the fact that there's an advanced me on some planet, probably who's visited me, and there's a past me, but it's all now. And then there's parallel universes. Like on some level, I can conceive it all. And on some level, it's mind blowing. So, how do we ingest that this is a simulation? Go a little deeper into that. Well, first of all, the the difference between how it really is and how it was portrayed in the movies, the Matrix movies, is that no one else is doing it to us. And I think uh, within spirituality now, there is a lot of that, that theme that people are playing with, like who's doing what to us. And it's taken people down a path that's very third dimensional. It's very victim perpetrator us versus them and we're supposed to be graduating into the knowing that we are all source there's no one that could ever be forcing us to come here that we could ever be imprisoned here or made to come here by our own mistakes and past lives like all of that to me is the old religious way of looking at spirituality and the new way is to say, this is all my creation. I'm making it up as I go. Sure, there was a plan that was in place before I incarnated for me to do certain things and have certain experiences and I want to explore certain themes. But now that I'm here and I'm awake, I 
should definitely not be focusing on what they are doing, whoever, whoever the they is in that sentence, but rather what I'm going to do, what I'm going to think next, what I'm going to focus on next. And that is like those choose your adventure books that I'm sure you remember too when you were a kid, like choose your adventure, choose to take this path instead of that path. And the story is different. You choose a different future. That's how we, that's why we have free will. It's so that we can explore different possibilities based on choices that are based on different vibrations that we're offering. Yes, that is so beautiful because we had an experience with a, a friend of the family who had a really hard time this morning and was basically completely freaking out over the government and yeah. all sorts of things that are happening right now on the planet in this country. And, and it was like um, sad because you, I know that must have felt awful to be in her body in that experience. And I also know because it was hard for her to get out of that experience. And she is a really spiritual person. So I think what you were sharing, um, it, it's just so apropos, even for a situation like that, like we cannot look at what's happening too seriously. And in fact, if I understand correctly, it is a blessing. The old has to crumble and it may not be pretty as it's crumbling, but it needs yeah. to crumble. The underbelly, the negative, what doesn't work needs to be dissolved before the new earth and the new humanity can be born. I, I always quote one of your um, frequent guests, uh, Bashar through Daryl Anka, when I'm teaching classes and stuff. And because I've learned so much from Bashar. And one of the things I've heard Bashar say to people so many times, because a lot of people who are into ETs and UFOs are also very much into conspiracies, covers, cover-ups, and those sorts of things. So a lot of times people will be talking to Bashar and saying, this isn't fair, the government's this, the government's that. And Bashar always, the quote I've heard him say many times, you are your government. That, you know what I mean? Like there's no, there's no separation. There is no them. If you, if something's happening to you, it's happening because you put it there. You wanted that to happen. So you can look at something as another thing Bashar will often say is you can give it a positive reason for why it's happening and you'll get a positive result. Because if, if something's happening and you say, oh my gosh, they're forcing me to do this or that. Well, maybe it's meant to just nudge you in a different direction in life. You know, because usually we do still have a choice. Even if there's a, a law or something, you know, there's always a choice that a person can move or quit their job or something that they really needed to do anyway. You know, when I was living in Hollywood, I had um, a, a, a stalker, a neighbor who was a stalker, and he would um, grab my doorknob at night. And he was this very large man, and he would shake my door. And he put tape over the peephole. And this was scary to me. I'm this little guy, you know, this skinny little guy. And um, what what I also needed to do in that moment was move to Oregon because I was falling in love with who would become my first wife. And I needed to make that move. And I, of course I was hesitating. This was a weird thing to be falling in love with someone that was a thousand miles away that I had been friends with for years, but never had had feelings for. So I had to make a leap of faith in a, in a lot of ways. And, and he was actually helping me to say, get out of here. This is not a safe environment for you to be in right now, you know? So um, I sold everything, packed up my car, moved up there. We fell in love and got married. That is a great <laughs> example. That's very powerful. Yeah. And I love that. I even love, Daniel, that you quoted Bashar, because I was thinking too, as you were sharing earlier, I was thinking when you said, choose your own adventure. I love that. 
Yes. It's like he says, follow your excitement and that will lead you to your adventure. That is, um, yeah, so important, so important about how we choose to receive everything that's going on and the spin we put on it. Uh, yeah. So I want to ask you about your channeling. Yeah. I know you're going to channel later. And my question to you is, how do you know who's going to come through? Do you make a request and say, today I would like XYZ for Dare to Dream podcast? Or does one of the beings, the energies connect with me and choose to come through? Or throughout our time together, might several beings come through depending on where the vibe and the conversation goes? Well, I'm sort of, um, I'm faced with this almost every day that I'm working because I meet with the client and I say to the client, do you want to choose who you want me to channel? Because I have a list of like a dozen that you can choose from. And a lot of times they will say, no, I just want to leave it up to whoever. And so then I'm in that moment where I just go into the channeling state and I allow whatever's going to come through to come through. But sometimes they really do want to talk to the Arcturian Council or Thymus, who are the two that I've been channeling the most lately for my daily messages. But yeah, I with like with Thymus, of course, I wasn't choosing that. It was totally out of the blue for me. I also started channeling recently during, excuse me, I still have this cough I'm getting over. Um, I started channeling the consciousness of quarks out of the blue, never even, never would have thought I'm going to channel a subatomic particle consciousness. Th that that never would have occurred to me to even reach for, but that started happening. Um, a group, my, my own uh, different groups, like my galactic team has come through recently. My spirit guide team has come through ones that call themselves the, the ancient ones because they're the progenitors of humanity. They're the ones who seeded us here on earth. So all these different groups are coming through lately that I'm not, I, I'm leaving myself open to whoever's going to come through. And in fact, one of your other guests, Lisa Royal Holt, channels the founders. And when I first connected to the founders, I was like, oh no, like I didn't mean to, to do it. And I thought, am I stepping on Lisa's toes here? So I actually reached out to her and I said, is it okay with you? And she's like, yeah, it happens all the time with my channeling statements. <laughs> Perfect, right? Because she actually also channels Bashar rarely, but Bashar does yeah. come through her too. And so, well, yeah, yeah, I guess he has come through a few people. Yeah, these are shared consciousnesses. And what about this beautiful Ophelia the fairy? Tell me about her. And is she a, like amazing and fun to experience through you? What is she yes. like? Well, my last session that I had just before this conversation was with a client who said to me, she didn't know I channeled a fairy at all. Cause I, I started channeling Ophelia 10 years ago. And then I don't really channel her that often these days, but I actually met her for the first time at Will Rogers Park in um, yes. the Palisades. <laughs> I used to do this hike there and the uh, most people go up high on that trail and I go I would go down low because I liked I like being surrounded by trees when I'm hiking and so I would go through this one part of the the trail and it and to me I was like this feels like where the fairies are Oof. so I would always take off my sandals and walk really slowly through that part of the trail mm -hmm. and then I started to say I want to connect to the fairies now and so I started to tone and get these high pitched tones. And then I sat under a tree and I channeled Ophelia for the first time. And this was probably in 2012. And um, then, well, so I channeled her for a while and yes, it's, it's a, a beautiful feminine energy that feels really, really calm and peaceful. And then, with a session I just had before our, our appointment, um, the person said to me, I didn't know you channeled a fairy named Ophelia, but I got a download of a name when I was meditating that was Ophelia. And then she said, 
And then my friend forwarded me an interview that you did where the person at the beginning read your bio, just like you just read. And it said that you channeled Ophelia the fairy. And she said she got like this huge, you know, uh, you know, obviously goosebumps all up and down her body because of the synchronicity of that. And the fact that she'd be meeting with me and having a session where then I just channeled Ophelia for her. So it's, the, the crazy synchronicities, and that's something else Bashar says, is everything is synchronicity. They just keep happening. Like when I when I channeled the quarks, I channeled them twice in a row during these channeling classes. And then a client of mine comes and says that she's been doing healing work on people. And she, and she also channels, and she asks the question, well, what is it going to take for me to go deeper mm. with these clients that I'm healing? And the answer that she got was working with the quarks. And this was within a week, all of this happened between, you know, and, and I, that was my moment of getting the full body goosebumps of like, oh my God, that was real. I, you know, cause I always question it. I'm always like, I don't know, am I making this up? Like what, it just, it all seems so bizarre sometimes, you know, <laughs> but then you get all these confirmations and it's like, uh, well, I, I, you know, we, we, in my house, we talk about synchronicity all the time when synchronicities are happening, you know, like we had a crow fly into the house yesterday Wow! and go, go in the kitchen flying around. And my, my next client that I had was telling me he's, or I think he was telling the Arcturians or whoever I was channeling for him that he keeps seeing crows and keeps having these like conversations with crows and, um, you know, it's like, it's stuff like that, that just keeps happening and, and makes you realize that this is all really real. I am so happy that you get that. So if you have questions that you keep getting that resolution, that you're being held like that, because it's big work you do, you know? And is yeah. there anything we should know before you channel anything, any at all that you want to share? Well, as you mentioned in the in the bio, you know, um, there's these tones and sounds that come through me that I never initiated that. That was that was not some so people will hear it and they'll go or they'll watch me channel and they'll go, oh, he's getting them. He's he's now in the process of getting them. But the truth is that it's all them. It's all the beings that I'm channeling coming through in the way that they want to come through and setting the stage, you know, providing the tone for what is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was channeling for like a year and a half before I ever started to channel these tones and overtones that started to come through me around the same time that I was learning about the power of tone and sound through Wendy Kennedy's uh, Pleiadian collective that she channels. And so it was, that was another one of those synchronicities where I was led by my own, by the creators, the first group I channeled to go and take voice lessons in Santa Monica, which I did. And my teacher eventually said, Hey, let's do a vocal warm up with toning. And then a, a little while later, I'm channeling these, these tones in the beginning of the the transmission so that's something i just want to point out to people because because so much uh, like light language is channeled and it's channeled it's it's like i didn't choose that either you know that chose me in the sense that it just happened one day i didn't even know what a light language was and the tone started happening um, at a certain point too, to bring them in. And um, whereas, you know, not every channel does this, you know, you, you watch Daryl and he's breathing and his eyes are closed and he's doing this with his hands, you know, but there's no real intro to it. But I just want people to know that's not my decision to do that. That's them. And that's how they want to come in. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> and then like, I guess I'll channel the Arcturians and 
I'll let them speak for a little bit and then you can start asking them questions, right? Is that how you want to do it? That would be beautiful. And unless somebody else comes, I really welcome, honestly, whatever is meant to be and whoever is meant to connect with me and with the energies participating in this as well. That's the audience. Okay. So yes, thank you so much. And yeah. the stage is yours. <clears throat> enthusiasm for connecting with humanity because we see how much potential there is within you to have experiences that will affect all of us throughout the universe and we are happy to be your guides through those experiences we know that from your perspective, a lot of what you are about to experience there on Earth will be new. However, we do want you all to recognize that you are multidimensional beings who have been to all the other parts of the galaxy that you can imagine already. And you are getting to experience this as though it is happening for the first time. But you are prepared. You have been preparing all along in this lifetime for more ET contact. 
and to travel to other parts of the galaxy. As souls, you have been doing it already and are just catching up to the larger parts of yourselves that are having these experiences right now and that are inviting you to the better, more expansive, more creative experiences that you have ahead of you. You have taken on quite a bit in this lifetime so that you could have the experience of releasing that which is heavy or that which is dark or lower vibrational to you. And as you do that work consciously and deliberately, it becomes a labor of love. It becomes something that you experience the beautiful relief from and you get to say, I did that. I released that. I cleared that. And I can feel the difference in my beingness now that I have. And isn't it wonderful to be able to demonstrate to yourselves that these types of beautiful awakening experiences are ones that you can initiate through your curiosity, through your ability to experience what it feels like to go down a particular rabbit hole of creation. And we want you to know that you are just scratching the surface now, and you will still be scratching the surface, even after you have made first contact with your ET friends, because there's so much more to explore in this universe of ours. And we are happy to be here for you as these higher dimensional beings, as this consciousness that is capable of guiding you because we have the perspective that we do from here in the ninth dimension. And we are able to guide you because you have asked us to as well. And you continue to meet with us in the astral plane while you are asleep at night to make your requests of us and all of the helpers that you have throughout the galaxy and the universe. We, of course, are more than happy to do so because we feel more fully who we really are as we lend a helping hand, even if that hand is a non-physical one. Now, we are happy to take any questions from you, Debbie, that you have for us. Well, first well, of all, first thank of all, you. Thank you. And welcome, and to, the welcome show. to the show. Yeah. How interesting, how we, interesting have a, we have a... I don't know how we have an echo, but we do. So I'll keep going. Yes, indeed. You are... I mean, this is... Talk about synchronicity. The fact that you even began speaking about this, clearly you've tapped into me. I, there's no accident here because you are addressing the very project I'm working on right now. So thank you for that. And I, I'm ready to deep dive. Um, I'm going to start here. So many questions. I want to start with this because I think it will open up a lot. So I'm going to be speaking on stage in Mexico City in a few months. And my topic happens to be first contact who it will be, when it will be, and also the connection between extraterrestrials and shamans, what they have in common, how shamans have been connecting with extraterrestrials throughout history and still today, and even how time travel is used. So I know that's a lot, but they've been beautifully intersecting so far. Can you tell me about those subjects and where they intersect and what for us, what for humans is new, is deep, is cutting edge about this that you can shed light on and help us to understand? Well, what's new at this time is the fact that together you're going to have this experience of ET contact. And it won't just be for 
the shamans or the Mayans or the Egyptians or the Lemurians. It's going to be for everyone. And it's going to shift the entire consciousness of the collective of humanity for everyone to have that same access that previously was only available to the few, to those who chose that for themselves in that lifetime to be that spiritual leader, to be that shaman or that teacher that would be able to take what they would get from the higher consciousness and bring it to the people. But now making it accessible to all people all at once is the major difference in what you're experiencing there on earth now, because it is the time of ascension. It is the time to bring about these types of experiences to everyone and not just the few who are privileged enough to have that pedigree that they're able to handle the energies. And is there anything therein that I should know? Because I feel like an ambassador of sorts, and I feel like I'm going to be speaking about something that definitely nobody else is talking about at this event. Is there anything that I should bring information-wise that I don't know? Well, when you are speaking to people around this particular topic, you want them to recognize that it is happening in order for people to see themselves as the beings that they are meeting for the first time or for what seems like it is the first time, that these are other aspects of their souls, that they do expand their consciousness through exploring spirituality to such an extent that they're able to include more within their sense of self. The sense of who you are as individuals has to expand. It must change to be more inclusive and to be able to say, I'm willing to look at all aspects of myself right now and deal with the aspects of myself that are more challenging to me. That's what puts you in a position to then be able to accept that higher dimensional beings or beings that operate at a higher frequency typically than the average human does is also a part of the same consciousness of that human and that they simply represent the expansion of consciousness that's going on within the individual who's willing to <laughs> accept that they are more than just the person that they always thought of themselves as being in human form. Hmm. Well, since we are all star seeds and we have past, future, and concurrent lives also on other planets and universes, how can we tell which star seed predominantly we are? What qualities inform us if we're Lyran or Syrian or Octurian or Andromedan or Venusian or Orion, et cetera? Well, as you said, you are all of them. And so at various times, you will be going through different activations of those consciousnesses within yourself. So you may be exploring more of the Arcturian within yourself when you're interested in us, in our transmissions, and also very much interested in going within, in having a spiritual experience rather than a predominantly physical experience, or having the experience of accessing more of your gifts and abilities. That's an Arcturian quality. That's why souls incarnate in our system, is to explore what they are capable of through meditation, through going within, and experiencing the types of spiritual practices that you all have available to you there on earth. Now, more specifically, if you're interested in healing and teaching, you might be connecting to your Pleiadian DNA and your Pleiadian aspects and past and concurrent lifetime experiences of self there in the Pleiades. And so 
It really depends on what the person finds themselves interested in, in that moment, what they are cross-connecting to and integrating more of into the human experience that they are having. Is there anything we can expect to happen in the remaining months of 2023 and beyond? Any probabilities of what we will experience as humans or on the planet? Well, you're going to be experiencing more and more leaks, more and more people talking about UFOs or UAPs, as they're now called, and experiences with people catching these things on video and hitting the mainstream, getting into the mainstream media more with reports of ETs and spaceships in the sky. And you're just going to continue to have that kind of experience of what some people call soft disclosure, but really you are the ones who are disclosing it to yourselves because you are the ones creating these experiences for yourselves to take yourselves to that next level of consciousness that people truly hadn't been ready for up until now. And so you can see it as they're keeping it from us. It's a cover up. We should be able to know everything that the government knows about these ETs. But really, until the individual is ready, they're not going to be even willing to explore that possibility within their consciousness. And now what you're seeing is so many people are ready for it, that it's making its way not only to different corners of the internet, but to the mainstream, where people are talking about it openly as a possibility, as a reality for humanity. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So we recently had, we have three dogs and one of our dogs died uh, on Friday in our arms actually in the house. And it was um, this tragic and beautiful experience all rolled into one. And I was able in the midst of my grief to be very present for his passing and administer shamanic last rites and things like that. What happens in that moment? I understand that animals, dogs, we're speaking about in particular, they're different when they transcend. Uh, what happens and where did he go? And what was that like for him? And what did they go through? It's very much about being of service to the very end for the animal companion that you have there, where they know that this is a powerful experience for the human being, but they also never really think of themselves as being mortal, as this being something that they need to fear or something that's going to be a huge transition for them to go into the next experience, which will be the same dimension that human beings go to when they pass on. And so what you'll hear about people saying when they come back from a near-death experience is that their animal friends were there to greet them as well as the humans that they knew who had passed on in the lifetime. And so that aspect of the soul that the animal is connected to is available to whoever wants to connect to that animal at any time. But as far as the consciousness goes, the consciousness does continue on its linear journey of experience to go to another life, to go to another body, another form, to continue the exploration into that dimension of experience that animal consciousness is. So both are possible simultaneously where you can still connect 
to the version of your canine friend that you knew in this life. And that consciousness can also continue to grow and expand and explore different physical bodies. Is there a period of time of, um, I, it feels like respect to, uh, like I still haven't, my mom died in, a couple of months ago, but I don't feel comfortable yet reaching out to her through somebody else. Um, who might be able to contact her. And the same with Oliver, our dog, like it's only not even been a week. So is there a period of time where the soul is undergoing an experience, whether human or animal, that it's best not to contact them, let them be on their journey? And then is there a time when it is good to access them? Well, you're thinking more in linear time as you experience it there on earth, whereas you have to think of an experience like connection that you would make to a dearly departed loved one as something that goes beyond linear time because of where they exist in that non-physical realm. And so you don't have to think about an adjustment period in that sense, even though that being will have an experience of that that will seem like somewhat of an evolution for them or a passage, an expansion of time. So you can connect whenever you want to and know that you're connecting with an aspect of the soul of that person that you did know, but it will be a more complete aspect. And you don't have to think of the person or the animal as having to go through something to then be ready for that contact because you're connecting at a point in space time with the version of the being that is ready to make that contact with you. So it's really more about you and what you're ready for and how much you need to re release before you can make that connection because in order to have that experience, of course, you have to let go of the grief and you have to be able to reach for that higher vibration that they are existing in once they pass on from the physical. Mm. Wow. Very true. I feel everything you just said so much. Yeah. You spoke about dreams and uh, Daniel and I also spoke about dreams. So now I'm very curious. So what can we do to orchestrate our own dreams? I know personally, there are things, if, if I had a menu and I could choose what I'd like to experience and along which lines I would really like to put in that menu to the chef in the sky, so to speak. But, you know, I'd like to spend more time with benevolent extraterrestrials communicating and bonding and exchanging wisdom and information. I would love to experience more laughter and you know some interesting adventures and so forth. I don't know, those are just some of them, but is it possible that we can do that, that we can actually choose and if so, how? Well, you are doing that and you are choosing consciously once you slip into the sleep state, where you're going to go, who you're going to connect with, what you're going to be discussing or receiving from that being or that collective of beings. So what you really want to do is be of a vibration that you can receive more of that experience upon waking. So it matters where your vibration is all throughout the day. And you can be more intentional in the waking state as well as to what you want to experience, but you have to believe it is possible for you to have that experience and that you can receive what it is you want to receive upon awakening. And so you're creating all of it you're creating the experience that you have while you're asleep and whether you can remember the bits and pieces you want to upon awakening 
Yeah, that's interesting. I know that, you know, for instance, a couple of nights ago, I had a dream I wouldn't prefer to have. And I would prefer not to have a dream like that again. It was a little bit of a nightmare. It was really disturbing. Um, you know, there was other people involved. And so are you saying even there was an aspect of me that chose that, that chose to have yes. that experience? Yes, because you often get that type of work done at night while you're asleep as well, where there's something you do want to experience to put you in touch with a feeling that needs to be released, that needs to be processed through you. But you don't want to create something in the waking state that you then have to deal with and clean up that mess. So you do it at night through an experience like the one that you had that you would call a nightmare. So as long as you wake up and you realize, oh, there was a purpose to this, and part of the purpose is to get me to feel the exact way that I feel upon awakening so that I can accept those feelings, embrace those feelings, and therefore release them. Hmm. Yes, therein <laughs> lies the rub because I I think I rather carried that for a little bit uh, rather than processing. I mean, now I feel like it's processed, but that's a really interesting way to look at it because also there's people I, I know when I was a kid, I had flying dreams. I loved them so much, but I don't recall in a decades having a dream like that. Is that something that we could encourage within ourselves that we have this kind of beautiful freedom and adventure? Yes. And by how you feel during the waking hours, that's what determines whether you're having that type of dream or not. And so as a child, of course, you do feel much more free and light and life is about play and adventure and learning. And so you're in that space more during your waking hours as a child. And as an adult, you start to take on more heaviness and responsibilities and things that feel heavy so that it's less likely for you then to have that type of experience while asleep. Hmm. What are, can you talk about shamans? Who are shamans? And what is shamanism? Well, it's an exploration into spiritual connection that you all have access to. And yet some people will choose to be interested in exploring different themes in a lifetime. So when a soul's choosing to be the leader, the spiritual leader of a group of people, then they will choose to be interested in that and in the pursuit of that, and everything will line up for them to find their way to shamanistic practices and being able to call oneself a shaman through training with a master that they're learning from. And so that becomes then the fulfilling of that purpose for that person in that lifetime, whereas someone else might be interested in exploring being an artist. And so they're going to be much more drawn towards painting and drawing and sculpting because of the soul's desire to have those experiences through that particular lifetime. So it's not that the soul that's choosing to be the shaman is more special than the soul that's choosing to be the carpenter or the construction worker or the teacher or whatever that soul's choosing to be in that lifetime. It's just that you all want to have these different experiences as different versions of all that is. And so when someone makes that choice, it certainly does seem like there's something special about that person, but really they go through the evolution in the same way that the artist goes through the evolution of learning how to work with their craft. And so that's what they are meant to be for their community. And when they fulfill that role, certainly it shows because they are more connected to the spirit realm. They're more connected to mother earth and mother nature, because that's where their focal point is throughout the life. 
<clears throat> why does it seem that in my estimation anyway, that the shamans throughout history and today have a very accepting relationship with extraterrestrials, that they lucidly connect with alien races. Um, can you talk about that, that connection and that relationship and that, that, you know, that's so accepted to them, they wouldn't even question that. Yes. Well, when you understand the expansion of consciousness is about being more inclusive and seeing all aspects of creation as an aspect of self, then of course, those beings are going to be more interested in seeing what else is out there. But certainly, you know, from your own experience, many people who are on a spiritual path know as well that as you connect more within, as you do more journeying and meditating and introspection, then you're more likely to encounter another being, a being that is non-human, that is perhaps non-physical or perhaps physical ET. And so the acceptance of it is also something that comes from learning about them because they do go through their training where they're told about these other beings that are a part of the human evolution of consciousness and always have been, because certainly you as a human collective are where you are today in large part because of helpers that you have from the skies. And that type of information will be passed down generationally mm -hmm. through the shamans. Mm -hmm. Can you connect with the energy of Mother Earth, Pachamama, Madre Tierra, beautiful, sweet mother? Can you connect with her energy? And does she have a message for us? Does she want to communicate with us? And if so, what would she like to say? Well, more importantly, all of you can connect with her. And it's a theme within the messages that we provide through Daniel here to all of you to seek out that connection, the literal connecting, meaning touching, lying, sitting, walking barefoot on her, because she's ready to ascend. She's ready for this next phase of the human experience. And she's there to support you. She's there to be your foundation, to be the oversoul of the human collective consciousness and to reflect to you what you need to see and feel about whether you're living in balance or out of balance within yourselves. And so she will always do that for you. And she's always providing you with various avenues for greater connection as well to one another through her ley lines, through the grid that you all can connect to when you're connecting directly to her soil. She wants you to know that she's there for you, that she's providing everything for you, that she will never abandon you, even if you pollute and drill and do the things that you do. She understands that it's part of the moving away from her so that you can come back to her and come back to the knowing that she is your nurturing mother that's providing you with all the love, all the support, all the compassion, and all the natural resources that you could ever need to be thriving there in your life experience. And she just wants you to know her love is unconditional and it is amplified at times when humanity is in greater need, like when there is a war or when there has been a natural disaster. It's not her throwing a temper tantrum <clears throat> when those things happen. It's a natural occurrence that people need to experience in order to explore different aspects of their own consciousness. And how will Mother Earth ascend? You mentioned her own ascension. What does that look like? It's a transformation, just like the transformation that's underway within each of you and within your minds and your consciousness. And her transformation is one that is 
both physical and energetic. And so she is also becoming a lighter, more malleable version of herself and taking on more of the energies that are available to her as she travels through space, as she receives codes and information from the sun, and as she manages to take on all the energies coming from various parts of the galaxy that are meant for her, that are meant to be received by you and by her to increase the level of vibration that is available to everyone having the earth experience right now. I've been reading a lot about the cosmos recently, and it was talking about billions of planets, their best guesstimate. How big yeah. really is the cosmos? Well, it's further than you can possibly imagine or fathom with your minds, but that's the nature of all that is. The nature of consciousness is meant to be reflected to you in the physical. And so as you explore it, you will find there's always more to uncover, just like you're doing in the quantum realm. And can you please offer us some closing mantras that we could use right now? My true nature is peace. I am the love that I have been seeking. There is joy available to me in every moment. I am one with all. I receive everything that I need at all times. I am open to all experiences and to benefiting from each and every one. I am the source of all creation here expressing as my unique self. There you go. Thank you for joining us today and answering my questions. And is there anything you want to say here at the end, any kind of practice? I mean, I loved what you just shared. I deeply felt all of that and we'll work with it. What do we, is there anything you can give us for transformation for, so we can achieve that peace, be the love that we're seeking, find the joy in every moment? Well, in your fast-paced, highly technologically advanced world, it is so necessary for you all to slow down, to realize that you already have everything that you need inside of you. And you can demonstrate that to yourselves by slowing down, taking time to connect with Mother Earth, and opening yourselves up like a flower. The flower receives the sunlight and the rain and the pollen effortlessly that it needs. And you are meant to do the same. You are meant to step into more of that divine feminine essence of receiving and to let go of that which is coming to you from more of a mental space of what you should be doing and how much you should be earning and achieving. And as you let go of all of that, you can let in so much because we are just one of many, many groups who is supporting you all on your journeys. And as you open up to receive from us, you will be very pleased with how much is coming to you from all across the universe. Mm. that's beautiful and i want to extend an open invitation to you and also to other benevolent extraterrestrial races and just say i am very open to connecting with you in my dreams i'm very connecting open to connecting with you in my simulated life um mm. and i thank you just so much for your beautiful presence Yes. 
We are the Arcturian Council and we have enjoyed connecting with you. Mm. And we'll give Daniel a moment to come back into his beautiful body. And Daniel, I don't even know if you were aware, clearly you have a, a phenomenal looking cat there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does like to get involved. <laughs> yeah, I felt like she it was a she. I felt like she was loving you. Like she has the most amazing tail that kept draping itself constantly <laughs> over your arm. It was like, I'm here, buddy. I love you. I'm so, but she was like connecting with all the energy coming through you. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, she was born in 2012. So I'd already been channeling for a couple of years when she came along. So she's very familiar. And she does make appearances in a lot of my videos that I make um, with the Arcturians and Alpine. Can we see what she looks like in her full okay. glory? Kaliandra is her name. She's named after a fairy that Nora Harold actually channels. Oh my God. Yes, Nora's, <laughs> I love Nora. She's been on this show. Oh my God, what a beauty. Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, that was so cool. Well, she's welcome back anytime. <laughs> thank you for that. That was really magnificent. And thank you Great. for being the conduit of all of that. It's amazing. You know, I, I feel it's not just the words and the wisdom. There's definitely an energy that comes through because I'm buzzing yeah. right now, but I'm also really relaxed and present. I don't know, little blissed out. Yeah, me too. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so Daniel, Wonderful. this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, I would like to be playing that role of ambassador between humans and ETs. I, I am very excited about being a communication tool between their consciousness and our consciousness and bringing us together into the galactic community in an official capacity and that when i think about that i do get chills and i do feel really excited and aligned with that being a, a part of my future as um as someone who's who's willing to dare to <laughs> to connect and to see what uh you know what else is out there and what would you like to share here at the end is there anything I missed or anything really in your heart you'd like to talk about? Plus, how can people find you? Um, well, they can find me on my website, danielscranton.com. And then um, I have a YouTube channel with thousands of videos on it of me channeling um, that they can easily find at um, youtube.com slash Daniel Scranton with a capital D and a capital S. Um, and I, you know, um, the message I would leave people is that I was 38 when all of this happened. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't somebody who always knew things or always saw things or um, I was a, a very late bloomer and a late bloomer in a lot of ways in life. And it's, I, I have people in my channeling classes who are in their seventies, you know, I mean, people, you don't have to think like, well, this is not for me. I wasn't born with that uh, desire to be a shaman. So it's, uh, you know, it's just closed off to me forever because I think we're all meant to be connecting and channeling and and healing ourselves and others. And so everybody can do it. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be an example of that to people because um, I never would have expected that I'd be in this position until it started happening. That's and I just had to keep saying yes to it, you know? Yeah, there is no age on growing and incorporating and learning and becoming and all of that. That's a powerful message. I resonate deeply with that. And I am one of those people you're talking about. I've always been like, well, forget about the shaman thing. That was its own journey and big surprises. But the channel thing, for sure, I vote. I'm like, well, I don't do that. And I think, yeah. you know, there are aspects of me still, you know, I feel like when I sing, cause I, I sing in a band and I feel like there is an aspect of channeling with that because there's tremendous love that comes through me. That's very healing for people. 
And uh, maybe when I do my shaman work, I don't know, but it's like, that's a big leap. And so yeah. I, I think you're saying, go for it. Let's yeah. see what's there. Like experiment, Absolutely. get a teacher. Yeah, yeah. It's much, it makes life much more interesting. So danielscranton.com and also his YouTube channel. Thank you so much for coming on the show, all of you. It was wonderful to have you here and have this great conversation. Yes. And I end today's show with this quote, through the sacred language of light, we unlock the boundless wisdom of the cosmos, transcending dimensions and healing souls. Embrace the journey of channeling, for within you lies the potential to connect with the universe's most profound energies. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. If you're hearing this on podcast, you can also see us. Go to the YouTube channel under my name, Debbie Dashinger. Next week on the show, the guest is the amazing Shelly Young. She's the owner of Trinity Esoterics and internationally recognized channel of Archangel Gabriel. Thanks for joining us today. And don't just dare to dream, dare to make all your dreams into your reality.